wanted to go over a couple of basic things about Fusion 360 and one first thing is how to access it um, for um, for free you can use to get a first a personal version um, personal use version and basically follow the instructions there to see if you're qualified but basically it has a limited um, has standard design modeling tools as compared to these extra things um, so but it can be you have a lot of things that you can utilize the other method is from the same kind of website go to there um, for educational and again you'd have to kind of follow things and put in the school and such um, but that can be a good way to get a hold of it without having to pay the full price that uh, Autodesk has is um, a lot of ways for you to learn about their products um, so you can go to their design academy or academy.autodesk.com explore and learn and you can filter by um, areas of study we'll leave that all um, software you can scroll down and they've got a lot of it here and but if you're talking about fusion 360 you can go to there you can go to levels beginner and you can find some very basic ones um, this one that is apparently being discontinued archived soon um, can give you some things but I believe it's a bit old this one's a little bit newer um, introduction to 3d modeling and manufacturing and that can give you a lot of information that's um, more in depth than the brief little thing that I'm going to go over today. All right. So once you're in, and you have it downloaded, and um, it actually connects. Um, usually connects online with Fusion 360. And first off, the thing, if you were, you know, found Tinkercad perfectly fine, maybe just stick with Tinkercad um, for what you're doing. If that's going to work for you, that's perfectly fine. You don't need to get your life more complicated. Um, but if you wanted to play around more, and this program has a lot more uses than just sort of making things for 3D printing. You can um, operate milling processes um, and do stress tests and things. So it's a very involved program once you get into it. So it could be something to really explore, but it can become a bit overwhelming. I don't really, you know, dig that deeply into it. To do the basics in the beginning, so I had to go back. Um, wrote, um, navigating around your scene. Holding down your middle mouse um, button, you can kind of pan across the scene, um, holding down the shift key and the middle um, button, you can, ro you can rotate around the scene. So you're not moving the pieces, you're rotating around the scene. And then your middle mouse key scrolling on your middle mouse key, you can zoom in and out. All right, that's, oh, a lot of programs, some of the other modeling programs I use, use the um, right click to kind of pan around and I kind of inadvertently do that every time just out of habit and so when you do that all of a sudden it pulls up you know, these nice menus and stuff and sometimes it even draws a, a weird little line there um, so just be careful if you're learning on different programs sometimes it gets confusing the more complicated thing was this blade holder and you can see there's in there there's a picture um, and if we go into this um, timeline down here you can kind of see the process so I can go back to that area and kind of play with that picture. So I just have a, I took a photograph, I took a part of a blade, a utility knife, and I took a picture of the, um, the blade holder. And then, um, okay. And then created a sketch. So I got that to the, put the picture up to the sketch size I wanted to, and created a sketch that followed that. And I extruded it. Um, anyway, so basically continue that process. So that's a process of drawing out um, the form, and I made those mechanical kind of things um, that way. And then another, um, the handle body, so I kind of modeled that um, under creating a form. Okay, so that gives you a very different way of working. So two of the ways that I found in Fusion 360 to work are by drawing a sketch and extruding and manipulating that, or starting out with kind of a, a 3D form that you manipulate um, directly. Sort of a combination in some ways. Um, and if you've also looked into Blender, that has a similar type of thing. But anyway, get rid of that. And new project. Um, uh, let's see, Messing Around. That's a good name. Let's try something simple in the Messing Around project. Um, you can go click create, but some of them are already up here. Um, if you're starting from a sketch, 
we can hit create sketch although we could have done it up there too we can pick the plane we're going to be on um, and I always have a difficulty you can also click over here and hit origin and decide on which plane from there and it pulls it to the front or at the top um, and I can put something in the center origin or I could put it pretty much anywhere if I want depending on the type of shape we'll start with a rectangle um, I can just draw out a rectangle and all of these there's a lot of little things here these are all parallel with each other um, and there's different methods of kind of changing that um, you can go in and sketch dimension and I can pick this up and say I would like to type that in to be 20 return so I can change it like that um, but we're gonna keep this pretty simple so we'll just say finish sketch so now we have this sketch we just sort of on the top let's see where home is there's home um, so top is there front is there now one of the easiest way to make a form with this is just to take extrude and pull it up and you can also type in there what you want um, I can also play with this a little bit come on and expand that out if I want to play with that it's a really quick way to kind of get something different we'll say it's a new body there's a different reason to um, make a new component later on when you're assembling things together that will be important but right now let's just keep it simple um, so I have my component or my uh, what did I say a body you can see that it's a body over here if I open that up I can see body one and it highlights why I don't want to do that um, now, say if I wanted to puncture this body, keep it simple though. Why was I getting com complicated? So instead of clicking one of these, I can actually click one of the surfaces of this if I know I, that's the surface I wanted to puncture into. Sorry, I'm seeing a lot of puncture. Um, let's see, we'll make a completely badly placed. Oh. You can always hit escape to get out of the tool. So if I don't, if I suddenly like don't want to have that tool there, escape. So I have my hole. And I can say finish sketch. And I have that hole right there. Um, I can then go to extrude. And I'm going to first select a profile, click it, and I get an arrow. And I can have two choices. I said puncture, but you could also extrude it out from there. And again, you get a number of measurement there. I could type that in and change it. Um, or I can kind of go down into it partially all the way. And now you notice it's changed to cut. Um, and I can go distance um, all. It should take it all the way through, but let's just, I like to just go through it all the way because it's an empty hole. And then say that's where I wanted to cut it. And I hit OK and now I have my hole through my piece. So you don't like that sharp edge on there. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Um, you can go over to modify and you can hit fill it. Again you can kind of hit the drop down menu and do all kinds of stuff um, but we'll hit fill it and we will select that edge and you could type in a measurement there um, but you can also kind of adjust it just by eye. But I could hit OK or I could kind of go on to, oh yeah, I could hit OK. Um, let's do this. Hit, you can do that in multiple areas. Oh, do it again. Um, modify, fill it. I can hold down the shift and select multiple ones if I want to move it. So I can kind of do that. You know, it's kind of the weird distortion I'm getting this area but that's kind of fun to play with um, but you can kind of adjust that or you can adjust that um, and then you can hit okay 